Jesus will only judge people after he has saved them. I'll let him explain. John 3.17 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. For God does not dispatch his Son into the world that he should be judging the world, but that the world may be saved through him. Jesus' Father sent his Son into the world for a mission. The goal of this mission was that the world may be saved through him. Jesus' death and resurrection successfully secured the salvation of the world, the whole world. The target for Jesus' mission was the world. If Jesus didn't hit the target, which is the world, Jesus is a sinner, which is someone who misses the mark. The true Jesus is not a sinner. He nailed the target. That is why he spoke this big truth right before he died. It is finished. His mission was a success, and this was verified when Jesus' Father saved him out of death three days later. The world can do nothing to add to or diminish this finished salvation that God and Jesus accomplished for the benefit of the whole world. When I think of this finished work of salvation, my mind sees a secure safety net being set up before the big show. In fact, Revelation 13.8 calls Jesus the lambkin slain from the disruption of the world. God planned the remedy for sin and sinners before sin even entered into the world through Adam. The safety net was planned before it was actually needed. God and Christ establish the secure safety net of salvation for the entire world, so that when Jesus does judge the world, which he will indeed do, no matter what happens to the judged in their judgment, their salvation is secure. Their safety net is solid because the true God and the true Jesus set it up, not the tiny God and Jesus of Orthodox Christianity. Stay tuned and I'll show you Orthodox Christianity's version of God's salvation safety net. You will not want to miss that, unless you're squeamish. Limited atonement teachers like John Piper, John MacArthur, and Chris Date, and many, many others try to convince people that Jesus' death and resurrection, which was for the whole world, will only benefit the elect, meaning only those who believe in this life. And millions upon millions of people have swallowed this horrible demonic doctrine. Yeah, it's horrible. It's worse than most other demonic doctrines. They'll play with words and say that Jesus did die for the world, but it's not really the whole world. It's only the elect that he died for, the elect throughout the world. Orthodox Christianity is ever diminishing the great work of the true God and the true Savior. God is now granting belief to his elect in this life. But that doesn't mean he's going to damn the rest to the mythical everlasting hell of Orthodox Christianity. There's very good reason why Jesus is called the Savior of the world in 1 John 4.14. It's because he saved the world. In John 12, Jesus expands upon his words from John 3.17 that we just looked at. So that we can now know for sure who is in the world that Jesus came to save in his first mission. John 12, 46 through 48. I have come into the world a light, that everyone who is believing in me should not be remaining in darkness. And if ever anyone should be hearing my declarations and not be maintaining them, I am not judging him. For I came not that I should be judging the world, but that I should be saving the world. He who is repudiating me and not getting my declarations has that which is judging him. The word which I speak, that will be judging him in the last day. Jesus came into the world a light so that those who believe should not be remaining in darkness. The elect, those who believe in this life, will have Aeonian life, as we read in John 3:16. For thus God loves the world, so that he gives his only begotten Son, that everyone who is believing in him should not be perishing, but may be having life Aeonian. And in Colossians 1, 12-13 we read, At the same time giving thanks to the Father who makes you competent for a part of the allotment of the saints in light, who rescues us out of the jurisdiction of darkness and transports us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. We know Jesus came to save the world, and those who believe in this life will begin to experience and enjoy the salvation that God and Jesus accomplished for them. They will be rescued out of darkness. And we read Jesus' words in John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I am saying to you that he who is hearing my word and believing him who sends me has life Eonian and is not coming into judging, but has proceeded out of death into life. Another great benefit for the elect individual is that he is not coming into judging. But what about those who don't believe in this life? Jesus addressed them directly in this passage, verses 47 through 48. And if ever anyone should be hearing my declarations and not be maintaining them, I am not judging 
judging him. For I came not that I should be judging the world, but that I should be saving the world. He who is repudiating me and not getting my declarations has that which is judging him. The word which I speak, that will be judging him in the last day. Here Jesus is speaking about an individual unbeliever and the world. Let's look at an example of an individual unbeliever and how he relates to the world Jesus saved. Let's call this guy Billy. Billy has heard Jesus' declarations, but he doesn't maintain Jesus' declaration. He is repudiating Jesus, meaning he has no place for Jesus in his life. And based on Jesus' words, Billy will come into judging in the last day, which means he didn't believe in this life because, as we just saw, those who believe in this life are not coming into judging. But Jesus says something remarkable regarding Billy. I am not judging him, for I came not that I should be judging the world. By Jesus saying this, he includes Billy in the world that he did not come to judge. So what does Jesus say he came to do with the world that he's not judging, the world that includes Billy? He said, I came that I should be saving the world. Jesus came to save the world which includes Billy and anyone else who has no place for Jesus in their life, even those who die having no place for Jesus in their life, those who will come into judging in the last day. And once you know it, that's exactly what Jesus did. He saved the world, including Billy and all other repudiators of Jesus. His death and resurrection actually accomplished something that will benefit the whole world. Billy's safety net of salvation is in place, and it's as secure as God and Christ. And the judgment that Billy will go through will benefit him and his judge. Jesus said this about the judgment in John 5, 22-23. For neither is the Father judging anyone, but has given all judging to the Son, that all may be honoring the Son according as they are honoring the Father. Jesus' mission of judging will be just as successful as his mission that saved the world. Through Jesus' successful judging, Billy and all other repudiators will come to honor the Son and the Father. No matter how severe Billy's judgment may be, even if he is cast into the lake of fire after the great white throne judgment, his salvation is secure and will be realized by him at the consummation of the eons, when Jesus shuts down the second death for good. There you have it, the true, secure salvation safety net that has already been set in place by God and Christ. Now, here's a powerful and disturbing visual of Orthodox Christianity's version of the salvation safety net. Warning, the following video may cause you to puke or may cause you to feel like puking. You have been warned. Warning. Some of the best news that you will ever hear is that the judge is also the savior. The first phase of Jesus' work, his first mission, was to save the world. And he did it. He successfully completed his mission. And Jesus will successfully judge at the great white throne. That part of his mission will also be successfully accomplished. And none of his judgments will undo his already completed work that secured the salvation of the world. Those who believe in this life will not come into that judgment at the great white throne. They are the elect and there are great benefits for the elect. But make no mistake, Jesus truly is the savior of the world, the whole world. Warning. The following video may cause you to puke, or may cause you to feel like puking. You have been warned. Warning. We annihilationists believe in what's called conditional immortality. Immortality is a gift, and it will only be given by God to those who meet the condition of being saved. Immortality is a gift. Immortality is a gift. Immortality is a gift. Immortality is a gift and it will only be given by God to those who meet the condition of being saved those who meet the condition of being saved the condition of being saved the condition of being saved immortality is a gift if you are curious about the elect and why God chose some but not all to believe in this life I invite you to watch this video next mm -hmm. 